Well, the rest of the world cannot understand what is happening in this country now. What the Supreme Court is doing could not happen in a democracy. In a democracy, the membership of the Supreme Court would reflect the democratically expressed will of the people. That means the Supreme Court would reflect the democratically expressed will of the majority of the people because the Supreme Court justices would be appointed by presidents elected by a majority of voters. But that is not the way we elect presidents in this country. We are the only country in the world where the person who comes in second with votes can end up in the presidency. And that is thanks to the long benign blemish in the Constitution the founders called the Electoral College, which has turned into a deadly cancer on the United States of America that is poised to kill the first word of the name of this country, united. We are now poised to go from being the United States of America to being the states of America. When a Supreme Court, whose membership is the product of minority rule, will defy 70% of the American people and revoke a constitutional right for the first time in history. The vision for America, as expressed by Samuel Alito and his clerks in the first draft of the Alito opinion to overturn Roe versus Wade, is a country where your rights will depend on where you live. Other countries of the world do not understand this. They do not understand how a fundamental right, like the right of women to control their own bodies, depends on your address. That is the perverse vision Samuel Alito has for this country. He proudly announces in his draft opinion that abortion law will be up to the states. He and the other justices who were appointed by two Republican presidents who did not win a majority of the vote think that the United States of America should have 50 different state laws on abortion. They don't believe that united is one of the important words in the very name of this country. The majority of the Supreme Court, which reflects the thinking of a small minority of the population, is about to revoke a constitutional right and erase the word united from the name of this country, in effect. And in the process, they will create the house divided against itself, which President Lincoln said could not stand. And so the clock will begin ticking on how long a majority of the people of this country will accept minority rule against their will, which robs them of constitutional rights. One way for the minority party in this country, the Republican Party, to achieve majority rule would be to campaign to try to change voters' minds to support Republican ideas, like banning all abortion in all cases, including rape and including incest, including the rapes of 12-year-old girls by relatives, the Republican Party could try to convince the country that their forced birth policy for 12-year-old girls who have been raped is a good idea. But the Republican Party, since the emergence of Donald Trump in 2015, has completely given up on the idea of persuading voters who don't already agree with them Every Republican candidate for president before Donald Trump was trying to persuade voters to change their minds and vote for them because they believed the way to win an election was to win the most votes. Now, as you watch this famous moment we're about to show from the 2008 presidential campaign, consider why this happened and why a Republican would never, never say this again. I can't trust Obama. I, I, I have read about him, and he's not, he's not, he's a, um, he's an Arab. He is not. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, 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 ma'am. No, ma no, ma he's a, he's a, he's a decent family man, citizen that I just happen to have disagreements with on, on fundamental issues, and that's what this campaign is all about. He's not. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. It's not just what John McCain said in that moment. It's that the crowd of Republicans at that Republican presidential campaign event applauded 
for John McCain's defense of Barack Obama as a decent person with whom he just has policy disagreements. That is what most Republican presidential candidates and most Republican candidates for governor or senator would have said in a situation like that during most of my lifetime. And that's what most Republicans would have wanted them to say. Not anymore. There are two reasons why John McCain said what he did. One, he believed what he was saying. And two, he was trying to persuade voters that he was worthy of their vote for president. He knew that that Republican woman he was talking to was never going to vote for Barack Obama, so he didn't have to worry about losing her vote. John McCain knew that that was the moment where he could win some voters by saying the right thing. Here's how you run for governor now as a Republican. I'm not going to take yeah. orders, though, from an illegitimate president like Joe Biden. That is the Republican front runner for governor in Arizona. No Democrat has ever run for any governorship in this country by calling the Republican president illegitimate. But that is standard Republican language now for Republicans. And it gets worse. Yes, 2020, totally, 100%. Donald Trump won. He won. We have a fraudulent pedophile in the White House because Governor Kemp failed. That Republican candidate for governor is trailing in the polls behind Georgia's Republican Governor Brian Kemp in the Republican primary where early voting has already begun. Brian Kemp, the governor of Georgia, stood there on that debate stage when the president of the United States was called a pedophile and Brian Kemp said nothing. Brian Kemp was handed his John McCain moment and he in effect said, oh no, I'm no John McCain. Donald Trump's chosen Republican candidate for governor, David Perdue, did not correct that Republican candidate who called the president a pedophile. The moderators of the debate, Georgia reporters, had no reaction to the president being called a pedophile. No one did, because that is now standard Republican language for this Democratic president, and it will be for any future Democratic president. That is how far beyond extreme the Republican Party has gone. In the Republican Party, you can say anything, you can tell any lie about any Democrat, and no Republican will stand up to your lie. Republicans like Mitch McConnell never say that Joe Biden is an illegitimate president, but they are thrilled that millions of Republican voters believe that. Professional Republicans need voters to believe that elections produce illegitimate results because they have no plan, no strategy to ever win the most votes for president again. The only strategy they have for winning the presidency is winning the Electoral College, and they now know they don't need to come close to winning the most votes in the country in order to do that. And the Republican strategy for winning the Electoral College is to install secretaries of state and other election officials in swing states where they can simply change the results of the election if necessary to give that state's electoral votes to Donald Trump. If they thought Donald Trump or any other Republican could actually win a presidential election, they wouldn't be trying to restrict voting rights and corrupt the vote counting process. But Republicans are trying to corrupt the vote pro voting process because they believe that is the only way that they can win the presidency. And when Democrats complain that that produces an illegitimate result, Republicans won't have to worry about that because they've convinced themselves that Joe Biden is an illegitimate president and a pedophile. Is stealing an election so bad if you're preventing a pedophile from being president of the United States? Tomorrow in the United States Senate, Majority Leader Chuck Schumer will bring a bill to the Senate floor that would make Roe versus Wade the law of the land through legislation. And the governing body that crushes democracy in America more effectively than any other, the United States Senate, will defeat that legislation because the United States Senate has built minority rule into its very legislative process by saying that 99% of the legislation that comes before the Senate can be stopped by a minority of 41 senators. A majority 
of United States senators, including at least two Republicans, support Roe versus Wade, but the minority will rule once again tomorrow in the Senate. And the world will watch as the United States of America joins only 24 other countries on the planet where abortion is against the law. Donald Trump's second defense secretary, West Point graduate Mark Esper, has just written a 700-page book adding to the proof beyond any doubt that Donald Trump is by a wide margin the stupidest man who ever won the Electoral College and the most dangerous. Toward the end of his book, on page 665, Mark Esper writes, The country became like a runaway car, barreling down a hill with Trump behind the wheel and his loyalists pushing down hard on the accelerator while others in the White House ripped out the brakes and cut the seat belts. Still others sat in the back seat urging the president, go faster. That is the picture of the buffoon. That is the minority rule president installed by the Electoral College who appointed from Mitch McConnell's menu of names one-third of the Supreme Court of the United States. And it seems that when the Trump justices got on the Supreme Court, they ripped out the brakes and cut the seatbelts and told their Republican colleagues on the court to go faster. 